Okay, welcome to our study in the book of Exodus. We're in chapter 27 now. We're going to look at the first eight verses. And you shall make the altar of acacia wood five cubits long and five cubits wide. The altar shall be square and its height shall be three cubits. You shall make its horns on its four corners. Its horns shall be of one piece with it and you shall overlay it with bronze. You shall make its pails for removing its ashes and its shovels and its basins and its forks and its fire pans. You shall make all its utensils of bronze. You shall make for it a grating of network of bronze, and on the net you shall make four bronze rings at its corners. You shall put it beneath under the ledge of the altar, so that the net will reach halfway up the altar. You shall make poles for the altar, poles of acacia wood, and overlay them with bronze. Its poles shall be inserted into the rings, so that the poles shall be on the two sides of the altar. When it is carried, you shall make it hollow with the planks, as it was shown you in the mountain, so they shall make it. Okay, so these are instructions about making the bronze altar. This is the first item of business we have out here in the courtyard. There's a courtyard uh, surrounding the tabernacle, a uh, big area, and out there one of the key feature of the courtyard is this bronze altar. And it's the first thing that's mentioned, the most important thing in the outer space in the courtyard. And that's where they burn their sacrifices and all that. In our measurements, this would be about seven and a half feet square and about four and a half feet high. And it wasn't just pure metal, it was, it was a lot of the structure of it was actually wood overlaid with, with metal. And then there was a grate that stood uh, extended above it. Apparently when they would move at different times when they would set this up, they would then take and bring in dirt and rocks and so on, wherever the local area is, and put that in the bottom. And that, then the fire was built on top of that on the metal grating that truly was a, a, all solid metal. And then the sacrifices would be burnt there. But anyway, the part, even though it was made out of wood and overlaid, that part was perhaps didn't get quite as hot. And we're back to this question again of how much is symbolic and what the deep meanings are. You know, it's interesting here, the description of the fire pans and the shovels and, you know, five or six of these different utensils they would use to, uh, to dump ashes and all that kind of business. It's not really described in any substantial detail at all. But you know what? God showed it to Moses very plainly, and Moses could describe it to the craftsmen, and they made it obviously to God's uh, agreeable satisfaction. So not every piece is described in every detail. One more thought that's kind of interesting is about the horns of the altars. On each of the four corners, there's a horn sticking up. They're called horns, and apparently people felt that uh, forgiveness is associated with those horns because, you know, even when people committed murder, uh, they come in sometimes and grab a hold of those corners. And one of the instructions that I believe we already read here back a, a few chapters back was, even if somebody is a murderer and they come and they lay hold of the horns in the altar, you shall come in and get them there to be taken out. And, and, you know, if the judgment is that they are to die, then they're to be taken out and killed. So, yeah, you don't mess with the altar. You don't, uh, and there's no freebie. There's no, like, a get-out-of-jail-free card here going on. If somebody's truly guilty, they're to be addressed in a just way. So God's mercy is there, but also his justice. And we seem to want the one but not the other but God has a workable plan. We need to go with his plan. See you tomorrow morning.